Hey, and welcome to MongoDB Atlas Tutorials. My name is Jay, and I'm a developer advocate. And I'm here to teach you more about getting started with our database as a service, Atlas. Today, we'll go over how to peer your VPC with MongoDB Atlas and Amazon Web Services. MongoDB Atlas provides you with a number of security features. The one we'll discuss now is the ability to transmit your MongoDB data over the private network subnet to your AWS Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC. We'll discuss the two VPCs that we'll be working with, the Atlas VPC and your host VPC. If you're using a free tier M0 sandbox, you'll need to upgrade to at least a paid version of Atlas in order to use peering. Amazon provides you with a default VPC for your account, as well as a number of guides to create a custom VPC with specific subnets if you'd like. The Atlas VPC is automatically created when you launch a cluster. There's no management of the subnets or the gateway required, and you can extend the VPC via peering to your own personal host VPC. We're going to specifically ensure that the IP space between our host and our Atlas VPC can communicate via the private IPs only. One specific caveat you need to keep in mind, your Atlas CIDR block will not be able to be modified if you've already launched a cluster. You'll have to make this decision on what IP range you'd like for your Atlas cluster before you get started. But the one thing that's important is it has to meet RFC standard. You can't use a bunch of random IPs because you don't want them to accidentally get routed over the public internet incidentally. This is why we tell you to use only private IP blocks. You can check our documentation if you need specific information on which IP blocks are referred to. So as I said before, we're going to specifically ensure that the IP space between our host and our Atlas VPC can communicate via the private IPs only. This will ensure that we're not permitting inbound connections from the internet to access our database, as well as isolating our traffic within the AWS network. It's important to always ensure we're working with two IP blocks that are different. This is an important part of how Atlas does peering. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to use the Start VPC Build Wizard, and you can access it right in the VPC section of your AWS account. So what I've done here is started building a two-tier VPC on our AWS side. So that's going to be a CIDR block of 10.0.0.16, and that gives us a ton of private IPs to get started with. Uh, I'm not going to use an IPv6 because it's not necessary. And then what I'll do is give my VPC a name. We'll call it J Demo. Then what we need to do is pick the public and the private IPv4 CIDRs. So in this case, slash 24 is perfectly fine. We're going to have one for our public subnet, and that's to make sure that our host network still can create things such as app servers or web servers. And then we'll have our private IPv4 CIDR subnet, and we're going to be using this specifically to just transmit network traffic between our Atlas cluster and our host VPC. We don't have any preference for our AZ, and we're just going to call our private subnet, private subnet. Now we have to allocate an IP for our NAT gateway. This is to kind of ensure that we still can have network access for our public subnets. So I'll pick an EIP that I've already allocated, attach it. We don't need a service endpoint. We'd want to make sure that we enable DNS host names. Hardware tenancy really isn't important, and we're not going to be working with Classic Link. So we'll just click Create VPC. And after a few minutes, it'll go ahead and complete the process. So while our host VPC is building, just want to give you some information. I put these two side by side because I think it'll look a little bit easier for you. You'll be able to see what we're doing on one side while the other side doing its work. So in this particular case, we'll be working in peering. And as we talked about before, we have a separate block of IPs configured just for your Atlas VPC. You want to make sure that this never is the same of any of these on this side. And the reason why is we don't want our blocks to step on one another. This is how we ensure peering occurs between our two VPCs. So we finished building our VPC for our host, and we've already got a running Atlas cluster. So let's get these two peered. First, what we'll do is go to security, we'll go to peering, and then we'll click new peering connection. The first step will be to enter in our AWS account ID. If you don't know what it is, click this. It'll show you a quick tip on how to get it by going just to My Account Preferences, and you should be able to just copy and paste it right here into the AWS Account ID information. Next, let's grab our VPC ID. This is found right here in our VPC AWS console. We just copy it, 
paste it here. And we know we're using the right one because when we created our host VPC, I tagged it jdemo. Great. Now we see here our region is US East 1. This has to match on both the Atlas side and your host side. We won't be able to do cross region. Next, we'll talk about our VPC CIDR. This is a CIDR block that cannot overlap your Atlas VPC. That's right here. And remember, we can't modify this if we've already launched a cluster. If we needed a different, what we would do is say, start a new group, and then go ahead and peer those. So let's go ahead and we'll add our CIDR block. Paste it in here. And then we'll initiate peering. Great. So now this process is going to continue, and it'll basically make a connection over here and ask, is it OK for me to peer with this account? So it'll deploy the change, and then eventually we'll go over here to peering connections. Right here, we've got pending accept, and what we'll do is right click it, and we'll accept the request. So that will ask us, are you sure you want to peer these two accounts? So that's the requester account, which is our Atlas side, and then we have our host side, which is ours. So we'll say yes, accept, click yes, and then the peering connection will be established. So now what we've gone ahead and finished our peering connection, we'll wait for the approval to finish. Typically it takes a few minutes. You'll just notice right here, uh, how do I approve this connection? It'll go on, you may see this yellow, but the really important part now is that we actually get our subnets taken care of. So without actually going ahead and modifying the route tables for our subnets, we really won't be able to actually use this. So next step is we're gonna go to route tables and we're going to see our two route tables. We've got one for our public and one for our private. We can tell that this one's for our private because we've got a NAT gateway set here for how you actually do internet traffic. You can also look at subnet associations and you'll see this is the private subnet that we set when we created our VPC. So all we need to do now is go to routes and we're going to edit our route. We're going to add another route and what we'll need to do is go into our peering section and remember we took, this is our VPC CIDR for that side, but we have this side for our Atlas. So we'll copy, and we'll paste this here, and then what we'll do is a drop down. So this PCX device, now that's our peering device. We'll click that, and then all we have to do is click Save. As you can see here, our peering connection says it's available. Our routes are configured properly to go through our peer, and now we're ready to actually start using our Atlas cluster. So if we look at IP whitelist, we'll see here that we've already got our full CIDR block whitelisted for our Atlas cluster. And if we really wanted to, what we could do is go to security groups, create a security group within our VPC. So it's jdemo, yes, create. And then we'll get a specific name for our new security group. In this case, right here, it's sg. E4, 3B, et cetera, et cetera. We'll copy it. We'll add the IP address. And what we'll do is put it right there. And we'll comment it, and we'll call it security group. And then confirm. And by doing this, we can start using logical security groups within AWS to start whitelisting rather than using IP blocks. So we're just about done, but we actually need to test to make sure the connections work. So what I'll do is create a host within my host VPC. I've already picked that it's going to be in the security group I created before, and I've picked just an Ubuntu server. We'll click Launch. I'll pick my key, Acknowledge, and we'll wait for it to build. So now it's time for the last part of this, which is we're going to test. So I built an EC2 instance within our public subnet. And I'm going to go here and grab one of our host names from our cluster. I'll just select, copy, and then I'll type in host and the host name. If you're running into any issues with Atlas, contact our support team at any time. Click the support button in the lower left of your Atlas screen or go to mongodb.com/contact. Thanks for watching.